So let's go up and take a look at masks. Remember I said at the beginning a primary correction corrects the color for the entire scene. The secondary correction allows you to correct for a specific uh, element of the scene. For instance, the yellow balloon. I'm going to add the color corrector filter to the yellow balloon. Before you open the color board, see this icon right here, which allows us to add two types of masks, a shape mask or a color mask. A color mask, which I'm going to use here, allows me to sample the color, for instance, in the yellow balloon. I'm just click, hold, and dragging across the yellow balloon, and then hold the shift key down to extend the selection. So the whole yellow balloon is there. If I go too far, I'm going to get the sky. So you want to keep it to the yellow balloon. And now, if you want to see what it looks like, click View Mask, and you can see just how well that, that uh, mask is selected. You can adjust the softness of the edge by adjusting the softness detail. You can add to it by holding the Shift key down and increasing. I want to go right to the edge of the yellow, too far, right there. And then you can always view the mask by clicking it. I've got a nice, solid yellow balloon. Now when I go to the color board and go to color, I'm going to grab global, and I can change the color of my balloon by simply dragging. And the color mask means the change is only going to be in that part of the yellow that I've selected. And I could make it a day glow, day glow green balloon. Or over here, this is me at BVE doing a, a, a stand-up talking about what I learned at the show. I've got a beautifully lit trade show back here, but a badly lit face because I brought a microphone, I brought a camera, and I forgot to bring lights. So I'm going to select here, drag the color filter across, go back and click the color board. Oops, sorry, go back and add a shape mask. Grab the white dot, drag the shape. Change this to an oval, grab the white dot, change the rotation, and get a sense of where my face is right about there. The inner rectangle represents the mask. The outer rectangle represents feathering. So now I can click here, and I can adjust outside the mask. Outside the mask, I'm going to take saturation to black and white. So now my face is in color. Everything else is black and white just because I can. And then inside the mask, I'm going to go to exposures, turn off. Uh, the list, turn on scopes. We can see that there's just no color in my face whatsoever. White levels are way too high. So we're going to pull up the mid-tones on my face, significantly boost the saturation on my face to try to give me some color in here. I'm right on the skin tone line. There's just not a lot of it. And we'll boost some more mid-tones to give me some more color right about there. And now to hide the mask, Click this icon right here that's blue, turn the masks off, and you can see, you can actually see my face. We'll go back uh, outside the mask, turn on the background color, and now, as long as I don't move, I've got a, a much better look to my face. This is where we were before. This is where we are now. And as long as I don't move out of that spot, um, it's going to be fine. The cool thing about shape masks is that shape masks can be keyframed and tracked. We can't add keyframes to color correction. We can add keyframes to the shape mask shape and position and size. So as I move around the screen, the mask will move with me. It looks like I'm being followed with a small follow spot to make sure that my face stays visible. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at color correction inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this webinar, please visit my store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 175. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.